Sports on this wonderful Wednesday morning. The Admiral Bill Stubblefield, do start. What a beautiful day it is. Thanks for inviting me. (laughs) (laughs) Sort of your place on Wednesday. I leave the door unlocked. Whoever shows up, shows up. (laughs) Also, uh, she is... uh, That includes Maria. Former editor of the journal... (laughs) Uh, Maria Lawrence, an all-star. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. Good to be here. Love that rain. The uh, the news uh, DNA in your system still thrives. I, I know. I know. I can't help myself. The weekend, I thing. sent you some photos of a of that terrible accident. That you were driving by as that took place? Yeah. Well, not... It, it was much afterwards. We yeah. were... My husband and I were out at the youth fair, working mm-hmm. the youth fair, before it really started on um, on Saturday night, and we saw police vehicles on High Street, and there was a tree down, and then we were coming home, and I live right off of King Street, and saw more police vehicles, and I said, let's circle around, because it looks, maybe there's another, um, you know, more yeah. uh, storm damage, and it was, it was just a, a horrible accident that doesn't happen very often a couple blocks from your house. So, sent you the photos and then heard another news story the other day and sent you some information on that. So, yeah, Shane Shane Heimberger, who uh, works for um, West Virginia uh, Job Force, there, they uh, had a that was a colleague of theirs that Mm -hmm. passed away in that accident. Very unfortunate. Uh, Craig Blair, in our opening, you heard there. If you haven't seen this yet, Brianna Heaney from West Virginia Public Broadcasting has done uh, some investigative reporting and an article which involves Craig Blair and his defeat in the primary that's entitled Dark Money Group Spins Local Election and National Initiative to Help Big Pharma. And if you may remember, uh, the uh, Stand For Us PAC dumped a ton of money. I think it was $400,000 in the last two weeks of that election. And uh, part of it, uh, well, probably most of it was uh, geared toward getting Craig Blair defeated. She's got a very interesting story of how that all ties together. If you get a chance to look it up, and Take a we're look. trying to get have a request in to try to get her on the program. And where is it? How can you? Uh, how's the avail- article available? Google it. Brianna Heaney, West Virginia Public Broadcasting, okay. Dark Money, and you'll uh, you'll see more about it. I'll send you a link to it. I'll try Please. to get okay. Colin to post a link to it on our Facebook page. Quite fascinating. Uh, let's welcome in our first guest of the day. We have had the pleasure of interviewing uh, this guest on the uh, telephone several times, but never in person until this morning. Erica Kalenich from the Libertarian Party, candidate for governor. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. I'm excited to be here in person. Thank you for having me. What brings you into Martinsburg today? Well, I'm here this week for the Berkeley County Youth Fair, so I thought I would stop by and see you fine folks. That's a good plan. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, how long have you been in town? Uh, just since last night. Okay. When are you headed back to where you, Where do you live? I live in Buchanan. Okay. So when are you exiting? Well, I'm actually going to run back home this evening. I'm mm-hmm. a lawyer, so I have a client to attend to tomorrow. He would be upset if I just stayed here in Berkeley County. Understandable. And then I'm going to be back tomorrow night and here through um, the weekend. Okay, very nice. So at the uh, youth fair, will you be uh, specifically in a location, a booth of some sort, or just kind of milling about? Yes, I will be at a booth, and I have never had the pleasure of being at the Berkeley County Youth Fair before, but I understand I am in the commercial exhibit yeah. building. Oh, very nice. And it's not going to be 100 degrees today either, so. Yes, that would be very nice. <laughs> it's been a hot summer to campaign, I have to tell you. Absolutely. It's, it's been difficult out there, so I'll be happy to be inside. <laughs> will there be a libertarian booth that you'll be sitting at, or are you going to share a booth with somebody else? This is a booth specific to my campaign, yeah, okay. so mm-hmm. I will um, not be sharing a booth with anybody okay, else yeah. except on Saturday, I will have a special guest. The Libertarian nominee for Vice President, Mike Termont, is going Mm. to be at the Berkeley County Youth Fair with me. Yeah, and uh, we're trying to set up an interview with him, by the way, too. Great. So that'll work out well. Tell us about the Libertarian Party. And uh, over the years, we've had uh, a couple different folks, uh, maybe I'm thinking three locally, who we've had on the program on a regular basis who have discussed Libertarian Party issues with us. Uh, uh, maybe one of the more prominent ones is David Valente, who is the uh, chairman of the state's Libertarian Party for a while. Talk to us about your platform running for governor. Sure. Well, the Libertarian Party itself is the third largest political party in West Virginia, third largest political party nationally. We've been growing faster than any other political party. And I think that that's because of our philosophy, which is also, you know, part of my platform running for governor, which is basically as long as you're living your life in peace, you have the right to live your life however you want, make your choices for yourself and your family, and the government shouldn't interfere with that. 
In other words, if you're not hurting people and you're not taking their property, the government shouldn't have any interference with your daily decisions. Mm -hmm. So my platform for governor involves limited government, government that exists really only to protect the rights of people to live their lives the way they want to. And that extends to solutions to fix a lot of the problems we face in West Virginia, education, economy, taxes, criminal justice, the drug ep epidemic. You can really apply that live and let live philosophy to all aspects of those things here in West Virginia. Let's talk education because we had a school taken over by the states here in Berkeley County recently. And it was eye-opening when the test scores were revealed for that particular school's ability to do reading comprehension and mathematics. They were abysmally low, hence the reason why the state stepped in. What in the Libertarian Party platform would help improve education in the state? Sure. Expanding school choice. Allowing parents to decide how they're going to educate their how they're going to educate their children, whether or not that's sending them to a charter school, whether or not that's homeschooling them, whether or not that's sending them to a religious-based education, and eliminating any barriers that the government puts in place to stop that from happening. Do we not now, do that now, Erica? We have a long way to go. I mean, we have made. Don't get me wrong. I don't give the Republican supermajority credit for much, really, but we've gone a, a fairly long way in the past few years. We have you know, started charter schools. But the state and the local county government still have a lot of control over whether or not a charter school is going to open. And obviously, they have a vested interest in making sure that charter schools don't open and are not successful. There are still some limitations on the HOPE scholarship. For example, if you're going to homeschool your child with the HOPE scholarship, you can only choose certain curriculums and get the HOPE scholarship. Um, as you probably know, maybe you've heard, you know, homeschooling is under attack because it's often used as a scapegoat anytime something goes wrong with a child who's been homeschooled. So th those types of things just, um, you know, d deflect whenever the government is failing in other areas. In that case, it was, you know, CPS and state police to protect that child. But the other part of that is not just talking about school choice. It's talking about how we spend our public education dollars. Most people, when they look at our rankings for public education, think that we need to spend more money toward education, more money toward education. I think if you actually dug into the money we're spending on education, you would be shocked. We don't spend in the lower part based on state averages as compared to where we rank with education. We actually spend kind of in the middle of the pack. The problem is we don't put that money down to where it needs to be with the students. We spend a lot of money on higher end administration. And you know, education is one of the only things where we send teachers, we require they get a degree, we send them into the classroom, and then we have a bureaucracy that is the State Department of Education and the Federal Department of Education that hands them a script and says, we understand that you have a degree, but this is how you have to teach. I'm, so, go I'm sorry, no, excuse me, I did not, I thought you were finished. That's okay. Uh, you mentioned homeschooling a while ago. Also, you mentioned uh, the Hope Scholarship were limited, that the certain criteria that they had to meet or the certain curriculum they, they had to pursue mm -hmm. with homeschooling. I was not aware of this. Would you pursue yeah. that? Would you explain it? Sure. I don't want to pretend I'm a homeschool expert, okay? My child is 23, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not a homeschool expert. But my understanding is that in order to get the HOPE scholarship, if you're going to homeschool your children, there are certain curriculums that you have to choose from that are approved by the state. In other words, you can't get the HOPE scholarship. It, it was one of the limitations. If we had been talking three months ago, I would have told you that the other thing that we needed to do with the HOPE scholarship is open it up because there was previously a requirement that you had to try out public school first. And if you didn't like public school, then you okay. could come back and get the HOPE scholarship. They did recently change that. But one of the other limitations that we still have, as far as I know, now if someone wants to, you know, put it in the chat, and I'm sure they will if I'm wrong, um, and let me know that I'm incorrect about this. I believe that there's still a limitation as to what curriculums you can teach from that are approved by the State Board of Ed if you're going to get that HOPE scholarship if you're homeschooling. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know more about that. There's certain, you would 
assume that the curriculum that established would be ones that are necessary for a well-rounded education. And if I'm going to use a kind of an obscure example, basket weaving, for example, would not be approved. Is basket weaving the sort of issue you're talking about, or are you talking about more fundamental, more substantive curriculum? I'm just talking about more fundamental, more substantive curriculum. But we don't but really know. You don't really know exactly if those have been met or not. I don't. I don't know okay. the details. I just know that there are limitations sure. on okay. getting the Hope Scholarship Fair with enough. homeschooling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maria, so talk a little bit about how where you fall in with the other candidates. Will you be allowed? Not allowed. Uh, will you be given the opportunity to debate um, mm -hmm. or not? And where are we with that whole? Thing. <laughs> I love this question. Thank you for asking me. A libertarian has not been allowed to debate in the governor's race since Wallace Johnson first secured the ballot access for the Libertarian Party in the 90s. Um, it hasn't happened. I don't expect that it's going to happen. I specifically approached Patrick Morrissey at the Ripley Fourth of July parade. And I said to him, you're a freedom of speech guy. You're, you advocate for, you know, folks understanding what's going on in West Virginia and what's happening. You're a freedom person. At least you represent yourself to be. I believe if I am, if there is a debate, I should be included. He deflected very, very much and led me to believe that there will not be a debate at all, including with Steve Williams. I Oh, wait a second. Not just with you, but with uh, anybody. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. That's well, the first that's I've heard of that. Keeping with it during the primary, except for one very early one, uh, Patrick did not debate his, his candidate. I think he said they agreed to do three appearances. And I, th I thought they did at least two of those. But this is the first time I'm hearing that he will not do any debates leading up to November. And though I don't want to make it sound like those words came out of his mouth. Those words did not come out of his mouth. What came out of his mouth was a very vague concept about whether or not there would be any debates and we're, we're still weighing our options and we don't know what's going to happen. Political you know, speak, then. Yes. Okay. Yes. A, but a, a very, very dodgy political speak. Um, certainly no commitment to invite me. I've also had conversations with Mike Pushkin. Um, I've not had conversations directly with Steve Williams folks, but I've talked with Mike Pushkin, chair of the Democratic Party, and also told him that I thought if there were debates, I should be invited. He seemed to be on board and committed to, to the extent that he had any pull in that, he would make sure I was there. Erica, what is the largest percentage of the vote a Libertarian Party candidate for governor has gotten recently that would be me in 2020 and i don't know the exact percentage as i sit here i believe is 2.8 mm -hmm. 2.3 i believe 2.3 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 2.3 and it, that was the high water mark for recent memory that was the high water mark if we're talking about a statewide race for libertarian at all that would have been buddy guthrie in 2020 for agricultural commissioner i believe he busted 10 percent again i don't have those exact 10%. stats in front of me but it was high should a candidate from a party which has peaked at 2.3 percent be included in a statewide debate for an office absolutely because the reason that we peak at those percentages is because people don't include us right Ch um chicken and egg I yeah know. i mean the you know with the libertarian platform Listen, we're not going to get money from special interests, right? Because by my very nature, I'm sitting here and saying special interests will have no place in my administration. I'm going to treat everybody equally. I'm going to minimize the size of government. I'm going to make sure West Virginia values are upheld. I'm going to restore the voices of forgotten voters who don't want special interests in politics. They're not going to give me millions and millions of dollars to run ads on TV because they know my philosophy is I have nobody to pay back but the voters. So, you know, I campaign, you know, I go out there every single day and beat the streets, you know, wear holes in my shoes, meeting people and meeting voters where they are. But the fact of the matter is most West Virginia voters are at home 
and they're watching TV and they're listening to the radio. And without those millions and millions of dollars, what people pay attention to are the debates. And so I think that that's why the voter percentages are that low is because people can't hear from candidates like myself. So Erica, how does a person um, who refuses to take special interest money, how do you raise your own money? Because, I mean, obviously you can get your message out on programs like this, but generally you have to advertise too. And we know that West Virginia is a big, big state, small state, however you want to look at it. But um, advertising is costly. So how do you yes. do that? So you still have to fundraise and you do still have to advertise and you fundraise the old fashioned way. You pick up the phone and you call people that you know have um, similar values to you. You walk around to fairs and festivals and when you find your message resonates with somebody, you say, ma'am, it was very nice to meet you at your vendor booth and I hear what you're saying about this permit that cost you a lot of money. I don't think you should have to have a permit to sell croc charms either. How about donating money to my campaign? Because that's the only way I can get my message out there. So you just have to fundraise the old fashioned way. As is true with a lot of interesting guests, I wish we had a lot more time than just 30 minutes, but we, unfortunately, we only have 30. Let's go to the issues very quickly. Uh, one of your platforms is reducing all unnecessary regulations within government. Yeah. Uh, buried in that was, uh, special treatment to out-of-state corporation uh, and I think you're talking about the pilot programs and other financial inducements how would you attract a big business and we in the Eastern Panhandle have benefited a great deal from Procter & Gamble from Macy's uh, from from others uh, quad graphics earlier we would not have gotten these companies without some sort of financial inducement and full, full disclosure bill you were the president of the berkeley county commission when uh, was it macy's or macy's came in Quattro. exactly right yes yeah. so you were involved in some of those negotiations yeah. and i realize amendment two would have addressed this in part but amendment two was 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 not passed by the uh, by the voters so what avenue do we have other than some of these inducements to bring large corporations into the state sure well, if West Virginia, under a libertarian governor, were to be a place, we would have an even playing field for all businesses, in-state, out-of-state, large, small, all of them. And we would be more attractive than any other state in the United States. We'd be more attractive than the states that we compete with right now, especially what you folks deal with, right, which is Virginia, Maryland, what some other areas of the state deal with, which is Ohio, Pennsylvania. And businesses would want to come here because of the regulatory and tax framework. You How would you get a, the level playing field? That's what we tried to do with Amendment 2 in part, and that did not pass. If you eliminate those regulations that are not necessary and you when you're talking about Amendment 2, when I'm talking about unnecessary regulations and creating a level playing field, it's going to also require some some tax work. Things like eliminating the, the business and inventory tax. But if we can work together with those that regulatory framework and that tax framework, we could create an environment in West Virginia where businesses like the ones you're talking about said, hey, I want to come open up in West Virginia, not because I need a special favor, not because I need a special incentive, because it is the most business friendly state in the union under a libertarian governor. And I don't need those special things. It's just a great place to do business. And people want to live there because it's a great place to do business. So there are people to fill my jobs. And I'm not saying it's something that happens overnight. I don't want to represent to anybody that with any of these ideas that you elect me and the first day that I'm governor, West Virginia turns into this utopia. It's a process and I know it's a process, but there are steps we have to take to get there. We make it so hard for people to do business. You know, I'm doing a barbershop tour as part of my campaign. Barbershops are a heavily regulated industry it's so silly i was talking to a young man who runs a barber shop in charlestown hard-working guy moved here from maryland opened up his barber shop told me it was twice as hard to run his business in west virginia than it was maryland told me he can't he can't find people to work he wants to run an apprenticeship for barbers can't do it why regulation he had to get in his car and drive down to huntington and pay his licensing fee and take his test in person 
So we're not utopia yet, but we have made progress, have we not, in making a more uh, business-friendly climate in the state? I don't think so. Okay. I think what's happened is that we have chamber-based Republicans who have told people that tort reform has made the state a more business-friendly state, and I don't think that there are any actual... Um, I don't think that that's true. I will admit that on some lists we've moved up, and I don't know the exact numbers. I don't have those in front of me. I think that there's one list that recently came out where we moved up to maybe 42 or something like that, but that is still way down at the bottom. We're still just scratching the surface. We need to come up to at least the top half. I would love to see us in the top 10. Erica Kalenich is our guest on the program, and she is a candidate for governor of the Libertarian Party here in West Virginia. Erica, under a libertarian administration, what gets eliminated from government? If you're cutting taxes, you got to eliminate something. What do you eliminate to keep the balanced budget? Well, I think, first of all, we have to go back and look at all the programs that have been created for years that nobody's ever taken a look at to see if they work. I'm not in a position to sit here in this chair and say what those are. I just know that no government in the world creates a program and then eliminates it. They don't go back and they don't see if it works. But I think that we can start with a 10% across the board cut of the budgets overall. And I don't, I think people are scared to do that, but we can. It's no different than if you were laid off from your job and you said to your wife, hey, we're going to start buying the Kraft mac and cheese or stop buying the Kraft mac and cheese and we're going to buy the Walmart version. It can be done. We can do more with less. We can spend money where we need to spend it. It's just like the education example I gave. Do we need to improve education? Yes. Are there states spending less than us that are getting better results in education? There is. To me, that's an indication that it's not the amount of money we're spending, it's how we're spending it. So we just need to take a look at how we're spending money. And I'm not a politician that's going to sit here and tell you that I have all the answers. I think politicians that do that are lying. What I'm telling you is that I'll surround myself with experts in each of those areas to tell me once I'm elected, hey, this is where we can make budget cuts and still get an effective result. But what I know for certain is that there are programs that have been around forever that are legacy programs that aren't giving West Virginia the intended result that they were designed to give us. I have 60 seconds left. They belong to you. Go ahead and talk to our audience. Well, I'm running for governor because I feel like West Virginia needs a change. We were under Democratic leadership forever. We were at the bottom of all the good lists and we were at the top of all the bad lists and the republicans took over and we're still there and maybe we move a tick but we're not moving we're not moving ticks fast enough so i just think that people should go to the ballot box in november and vote for somebody that they believe in vote for somebody that gives hope and vote for somebody that they think has west virginia values not democrat or republican values and erica how can people find out more about your campaign they can go to my website, which is now is the time wv.com, and they can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Erica Kalinich, Libertarian for Governor. Uh, your Libertarian Vice Presidential Candidate, Mike Termott, is scheduled to be on the program tomorrow at 8 30. And I'm working with David Valente somewhere around the middle of the month to get the presidential candidate on the program, too. Chase Oliver, I believe his name is. Yes, sir. Right? He's energetic. Good to see you, Erica. Good to see you, too. Thanks for coming in.